The Cowboys are worth four more points per game with Dak starting over Andy Dalton. So, Skip, I want to ask you about your Cowboys. Do you agree that Dak would be worth four extra points? Shannon Sharp, when I saw yep. this last night on Fox Bet, the top of my head blew off. I'm, I'm way down here in my little humble abode. You're way up there in your palatial estate <laughs> in Bel Air. The top of my head blew off and went all the way to Bel Air. Look, I, I love Dak Prescott, but when did Dak Prescott turn into Tom Brady meets Michael Jordan? I mean, it was just last August that NFL.com came out with its annual top 100 players in the NFL survey as voted upon by the players. And Dak Prescott was not even in the top 100. And then he quarterbacked my Dallas Cowboys to an 8-8 eight and eight record, during which he went 1-6 and six versus the playoff teams that they played last year. And he did not make the Pro Bowl because he did not play great down the stretch, especially at New England and at Philadelphia. And now you're telling me that if Andy Dalton replaces Dak Prescott, that suddenly it's going to create a four-point swing in the betting lines? Do you realize four, four points is? It's unheard of. <laughs> it's an avalanche. It's a tsunami. It's a California earthquake. It just rarely, rarely happens. And, and wait a second. That's enormous, and that is preposterous. It's not going to happen because we are talking here about Andrew Gregory Dalton, the new backup quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Andy Dalton is a three-time pro bowler. Andy Dalton in his first five years for the Bungles, playing for the lousy Cincinnati Bungles. He averaged 10 wins a year for five years. Look it up. They made the playoffs four of those five years. He did not play well in the playoffs, but he got the Bungles to the playoffs four times. Over that span of those five years, he had the third most wins in all of pro football behind Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And in his career, he's had the fifth most fourth quarter comeback since his rookie year in the National Football League in, in as late as 2017. He led the NFL in fourth quarter comebacks. And dare I even mention, we're talking about the Andy Dalton who at TCU, which happens to be very near Jerry World, as a native Texan, he guided the Horned Frogs to 13-0 his last year there. They won the Rose Bowl. They finished second in the nation. He has won a whole bunch of football games because he has started 133 NFL games in his career, and he's only 32 years of age. And now you're, you're telling me that it's like Tom Brady would be replaced by Cooper Rush, who's a former backup quarterback for the Cowboys? No, it's Andy Dalton. It's not Cooper Rush. Maybe I'd give you with Cooper Rush a four-point swing. But you're, you're trying to tell me that Michael Jordan's going to be replaced in the starting lineup by Steve Kerr? Andy Dalton is not Steve Kerr. Two he is so much better than Steve Kerr. And in the end, Shannon, I, I've said this before on the show, and now I'm going to say it again with all my heart and soul. If Dak Prescott does hold out, let's, let's do hypothetically through the whole next football season. It's a possibility as we speak. I believe that Andy Dalton, if he started all 16 games, could win 10 of them. Fox Betts says he would only be favored to win four. So you're telling me Andy Dalton would go four and 12? No. I say he could win 10 wins with this weaponry and a top five offensive line and Ezekiel Elliott behind him. Are you kidding me? I'll go 10. I'm not saying he's better than Dak. Obviously, he's not. Dak might be able to win 11 or 12 games, but he's not that much worse than Dak Prescott. So in the end, I say preposterous. So b before I launch, what, would you, what do you think the ideal point spread should be between Dak and Andy Dalton? 
a half a point, maybe one, maybe. Oh, man, you better more like stop. A half. <laughs> no, no, I better start. You ought to stop. I, it, Shannon, a half a point, a half a point swing at a point spread is pretty significant. Again, it is. Th- this yeah. is this is like a hurricane hit. <laughs> Skip, well, it, ma- it makes sense to me because I believe Dak is a better quarterback at this point in his career than Andy Dalton is at this point in his career. But, Skip, yeah. if, if when you look at it, out of 32 quarterback rooms, that's only the 17th best. I mean, you, you're looking at Russell Wilson. He's 10 points. Lamar is 8. Patrick Mahomes is 7. Skip, I mean, you look – I mean, so if you look at it, Drew Brees to Jameis is 3. Drew Brees – to turn over machine Jameis. So, Skip, I'm not surprised that is, that is uh, four points. Now, Skip, you said yeah, they're going to mean they're going to go four and whatever. No, that means that the Cowboys would be favored. And if the line is, say, you know, four points, that means it might be a pick of ball game, Skip. You don't start the game with those points or minus those points. That's just for, you know, people like you and myself, you know, to pick up a cool couple of bucks. You know, you don't gamble anymore. But anyway, but Skip... I do agree with it. I, I was surprised. I thought it would have been a. I, I thought it would have been a little. Honestly, I thought it was going to be a little higher. Considering Skip higher? that last year Andy Dalton was thirty. Listen, Andy Dalton Skip was twenty nine out of thirty in QBR. He did start the season zero and eight. They went to Ryan Finley and they ended up going back to Andy Dalton. So Andy Dalton did not play particularly well, and he hasn't played well, Skip. I understand his first five years. But Andy Dalton has been in the league about nine years. So the last four hasn't been as productive as the first five. And you have to factor that in. Skip, they did. He did allow them to get Joe Burrow on his watch. He started. There's a reason why they got Joe Burrow. But, um, Skip, when you look at it, four points is really not a lot. When you look at some of the other quarterbacks, and you're like, that's it. At least he's not Mitchell Trubisky. It's about us, too. So, in other words, they're losing points by starting Trubisky as opposed to starting Nick Foles, Skip. But four points, Skip, when you, and I get what you're saying because normally you get three points for the home field, if, especially if you're playing at home, you get, you get three points. So, basically, they're saying if Dak does not play, he's four points better in every single game than Andy Dalton. And I can see that, Skip, because I do believe that right now, as we speak, that Dak Prescott is a considerably better. And I'm not, Skip, I'm not talking about. I think what you do, you try to fact this like they got Dak like a Mahomes or, or Lamar Jackson. And I'm not saying that, but I do believe he's, I believe, Skip, he's he's four points better than Andy Dalton. And I believe they will win more games. They will be in, uh, in contention in more games if Dak is the starter. Now, Skip. What they did with getting Andy Dalton is that they gave themselves, like, as Stephen Jones says, Skip, now he can sleep at night. Because I can assure you, if this thing was going to linger on in the training camp, he was not going to rest peacefully knowing that Cooper Rush is his backup. At least now, Skip, he might, you know, sleep in two, three-hour increments, but he ain't going to get a full night's sleep like he would if an old Dak was the quarterback. He was sleeping full eight hours like he was taking Ambien. He was sleeping good, rest, rest. Oh, yeah, we got this game. But that's not going to happen because Dak won his money. But I do agree with Fox Bet that Dak Prescott is four, at least four points better than Andy Dalton. Shannon Sharp, Andy Dalton yeah. was so bad last year, and I remind you, he was playing with the worst <laughs> team in the NFL. But he was so bad. Yeah that there were rampant reports and speculation that he was headed for New England to replace Tom Brady because everybody wrote or or spoke that Andy Dalton's the perfect fit in New England. He's Brady-esque. He'll be able to segue right into that Tom Brady offense and run it almost as well as Tom Brady does. I thought that was where he was headed. The big thought was, He's going to have to take far less money than he was scheduled to make in yep. Cincinnati. Jer- yep. Jerry Jones stole him for $3 million a year. I know I'm mm-hmm. sleeping way better because Andy Dalton is my quote-unquote backup. He's the best backup in pro football. He, he's not just a backup. He's a starter of a backup. 
He's more like yeah, a one A. He is he is the ace that Jerry Jones just pulled out of his sleeve in this card game with Dak and his new agent. And again, Shannon, I, it, I have such mixed emotions because no one has defended Dak Prescott any harder than I have. But I never said he was Tom Brady. I said he could be Brady esque. But I never said he was better than Mahomes, or I haven't said he's better than Lamar or Deshaun. I just said he's a, the, maybe the 10th best quarterback in the league. And now you're telling me he would get replaced by a man with those credentials that I just detailed about Andy Dalton, and you're telling me that the sky would fall on the Dallas Cowboys? It would not. And Shannon, now we get down to the crux of this argument. This is the reason there's a stalemate right now between Jerry and the new agent, Todd mm -hmm. France, as you well know. Right. The stalemate is caused because Jerry and Stephen Jones look at what they have and they say, is it the weapons or is it the quarterback? Obviously, the quarterback is very good, but the weapons are sensational. Again, Pro Football Focus just ranked the Dallas Cowboys receiving core as third best in the league behind Tampa Bay's and Kansas City's. That's extraordinary. That's, that's sensational to me because I didn't see it coming that they would be able to draft C.D. Lamb. I told you all year, he's the best receiver in college football. They had him ranked sixth on their board. He fell into their laps at 17. So all of a sudden, Dak Prescott should be thanking his lucky stars. He's got another weapon. And Shannon, that I, I realize, Travis Frederick, I, I got all that. I, you know, and there's been some age and attrition in the offensive line. It's still going to be top five. Lyle Collins, yeah, Zach Martin, even Ty Smith, it's a top five line. So you have to ask yourself, is it the quarterback? Is he more game manager? Do, does he go along for the ride occasionally? I, I was disappointed in Dak last year. I told you at New England, not very good. If you, I even go back to the first year at New Orleans, not great. At Philly, not great. Yeah. Had a shoulder banged up, but he was not great. You didn't like him at all. You didn't like anything he did last year. So now we're talking about him like he is truly the GOAT. And I, I missed it that, that he became the GOAT. I, I overslept on that day. I, I don't know. You, you – you talk about these great weapons that the Cowboys have now in place to surround Dak. So let me ask you a question. Were the weapons that he have that he has now, were they greater than the weapons that he had that they the Cowboys had in 2014? So if I give you right now, I'll give you Amari Cooper or I give you Dez at his apex. Who you taking? If I give you Blake Jarwin or I give you 2014 Jason Witten. Who you taking? If I give you Zeke Elliott at his absolute best, who are you taking? DeMarco Murray, 1848. You see what I'm saying? And you got a young Ty Smith. And you got a young Zach Martin. And you got a young Travis Frederick. So in other words, they've always had weapons. And they had Tony Romo, who's the highest paid quarterback. What did it get him? So now all of a sudden, you say we've given you more weapons. No, you haven't. Because you would take Daz Bryant at his apex over Amari Cooper right now, even though you fell out with okay. Dan because you said he became broken down, and he did. I got it. No. I, I got guarantee it. you. I, I give but Skip, you that. But Skip, okay. But Skip, when you, but Skip, here's one more thing before I turn it back over to you, Skip. When you look at it, Skip, do you realize Aaron Rodgers is only plus five over Jordan Love, who's never taken a snap? Let that sink in. He's only five better than Jordan Love. Wentz is only five and a half over Jalen Hurts. These guys have never played. Skip, at least Andy Dalton has played, and I get it. You say, well, hold on. This guy's been in the league ten, uh, uh, nine, ten years. He's gone to Pro Bowls. He's taken a team. I get all that. But, Skip, 17th out of 15, and you look at some of the names on here that have a, a close margin like that, Skip, I don't really think it's that far-fetched. I really don't. Okay. Back to 2014, you make some good points. Yeah, yeah I would have taken that Dez over this is Amari, especially the Amari who quit on me last year at Jets, at New England, at Philly. It's hard <laughs> for me to stomach that right now, so I'm not in a good place with Amari. And they just gave him $100 million, so you got me on that one. Exactly. And, and then 
<laughs> you know, DeMarco that year was extraordinary. That he gave, he died for the cause, so to speak, because he gave yes. about all he had left in his body. And he was more productive that year than Zeke certainly was last year. Zeke fell off just a little bit. I think the holdout got him. He was running in Cabo San much of the year and not quite himself. <laughs> I'm looking for bounce back. But the offensive line was it was pretty good in 24. I give you all that. You had those younger players great. not quite even coming yes. into their prime. Okay, I, I will give you that. And you say, what did it get you? Well, it got me robbed at Green Bay. That's what it got me because they went up and beat Aaron Rodgers in his own house. They won on the frozen tundra, the sacred Lambeau field. And, and Dez caught it. That's what Dez caught it and ran with it two strides and took it in his left hand because he's left handed and slammed it on the goal line like running backs do. And they said, no catch. What are you talking about? We won that we game. Won we game. had won at Seattle already that year. <laughs> so we would have gone to Seattle the next week in the NFC Championship game, and I believe we would have won that game. So that's what see, that got see. me. Is Tony Romo better than Dak Pre No, I've, I've said from the start, Dak has better intangibles than Tony. Tony went blind under fire and just threw up jump balls toward Des Bryant, and too many times he threw them to the wrong team. I give you that. Dak just flat out, fair and square, beat out Tony Romo when Dak was a rookie. And Tony, after the game at Pittsburgh, you remember, walked in the locker room and turned to Stephen Jones and basically said, I concede. That is so, remember what he said, it, that's so effing good that nobody understands how great he just was against the Steelers right. in their house right. when he and Zeke took over that game as rookies. As that's you not easy. The week we had been up in mm -hmm. up in New York at the UFC in Madison Square Garden. So the point is, Correct. in the end, I, I give you all that, but I, I also give you all this because they did not have a second. They did not have a C.D. Lamb. He's going to. I told you the day after the draft, he's going to change life for Dak Prescott, just the way Amari started to change it when he came at midseason, obviously two years ago. It started to turn Correct. quickly. Dak did need some help. I still love Dak. I, I'm not trying to denigrate him in any way, shape, or form. I'm just saying, no, he, he's not that much better than Andy Dalton. But, Shannon, you know and I know the reason I get so upset about this is, as we speak, Todd France is running back to the negotiating table to get Jerry on the phone to say, hey, Jerry, do you see what Fox Bet said? You're going to be in big trouble if you start Andy Dalton. You're only going to be favored in four games next year if you have to go to and yep. resort to Andy Dalton. And it's been yep. this bizarre run of accolades for Dak Prescott lately that I don't get. I'm starting to call them Dakolades, not accolades. They're Dakolades because uh -huh. they're everywhere. I'm getting oh. bombarded on uh -huh. a daily basis with, here we go again with, wait a second, Dak Prescott has risen all the way to third? In the MVP odds? What? That Dak Prescott who went 8-8 eight and eight and didn't make the Pro Bowl last year? He's all the way up to third in Roto World as projected um, fantasy quarterback. He'd be fantasy. the third best. What? Seriously? And then we heard from Pro Football Focus that, or it was a next-gen stats, I guess we had yesterday, that Dak was the best deep ball thrower in the whole NFL last year. I, I missed that. I don't know. I, I didn't really get that. I thought he was good, but he wasn't the number one. I didn't think, but that's what the stats say. Well, once again, advantage Todd France. So my problem with all this is it's just making it worse and worse and worse. The stalemate is growing and growing. Dak's a very proud young man. I always laud his football backbone and his character. And now that character is being turned against Jerry Jones and my football team because I believe we're in for a long battle here and maybe a holdout that would pass July 15th, obviously, when you have to take the cap, uh, the uh, tag or not. And tag. it might mm -hmm. linger right on into the regular season. You would love it, but, you know, if Dak oh. does start missing real games to hold out, at least I got a fallback. I got the best fallback. In the whole league, I got Andy Dalton, and I do not think it would be a four-point deficit with Andy Dalton with these weapons. I think you'd start to see the weapons rise and shine and, and carry Andy Dalton along with the rising tide of weaponry. 
You know what, Skip Bayless? You would do it. I mean, all last season, you sung Dak Prescott praise. Oh, he's good. He's a gamer. My guy's a warrior. And you're doing all this. And the moment it comes time, Skip, you know what? In the moment it comes time that you got to make a stand, uh, you want to accept the first offer. No, 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 no. Dak says, hold on, wait a minute. I've been the starter. There have been very few quarterbacks that say they've started every single game since 2016. I'm one of those guys. Yep. There are very Big. few quarterbacks that say yep. they've won the division as the starting quarterback. I've done that twice. So I've started every single game. I've won the division twice in four seasons. And everybody, is, you can look, it's factual. I've gotten considerably better every single year. See, Skip, we got to be able to separate, okay, he, the quarterback's play is getting better as opposed to the team's record. Because sometimes the team can get good and the quarterback does not improve. Sometimes the quarterback can improve and the team's record doesn't improve. That's why, to me, our 97 Super Bowl team was better than 98 to me because I believe we had more. But some people might argue that, Skip. What you do is that you try to tie Dak's play into their record. Well, he wasn't as good in 19 as he was 18. Yes, he was. He was better. Dak threw the ball better. They relied, even though they tried to rely on uh, Zeke, Zeke didn't have the impact in 2019 that he had in 2018. So that is factual. So although Dak, the record is not indicative of how well Dak played, Dak has gotten better year after year after year. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Shannon, he's Mahomes or he's Deshaun. No. I've said that, Skip. But no. he has gotten better, Skip. You know that. And, if, and that no, play I should be rewarded that. handsomely. I, I'm sorry. Are you watching you the same game break I am? Up my team and wreck my salary cap. Yes, I am. No. Did you watch the games down the stretch <laughs> of 2018 after he got Amari? He was on fire. He was making plays with his arm and his legs that were extraordinary. He was the reason they beat Seattle in his lone playoff victory at Jerry World following the 2018 season. He played well okay. enough out here at the Coliseum against the Rams to win that game, and the defense literally did not even show up that day. That Dak, I miss a little bit. I told you last year down the stretch I was giving him C's, C grades, C plus, C, C minus. He wasn't Bees. great. I told you that. Well, I, I told you it wasn't what I expected. It was that they went eight and eight and lost the division to a sorry nine and seven see? Beagles team. I'm whoa, sorry. Whoa, whoa. See, it, you it, see, what, it, Skip. Yeah. Go back. What? Go back to what you said. Go back to what you said. I told you the yeah. number one killer of a football team is what expectations. You expectations. just said he didn't play to the expectations of one Skip. You see. Dumb expectations. Okay. Now, you're setting yourself up for failure okay. again. Okay. I got, you're doing that again, and I don't like it. I got to make one, one last point. I am sick and okay. tired of hearing people ridicule and, and condemn Jerry Jones. Why didn't you jump in a year and a half ago when you could have gotten Dak cheaper at that point? I believe Jerry did make an offer to Dak a year and a half ago. He has a new agent named Todd Francis. He says, no, we ain't doing that. I still believe they're asking for outrageous out-of-bounds money, and they were asking for it a year and a half ago. This, has, this continues from where it started a year and a half ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.